and welcome to Pat Bear's Anime Club, an ongoing video series where I, Pat Bear, take a look at a theme, topic, idea, subject, genre, uh, review, preview, something to do with anime, something that I want to talk about. And uh, this video, this particular one, this episode you're watching is no different. And in fact, we're going to start talking about three shows I think you should check out from the summer season, the, the current 2021 summer anime season. We got a lot of new shows coming in. Well, we certainly have uh, uh, sequels and part twos and part threes of some shows, but we also have uh, plenty of new shows to check out. And I'm going to talk about three of them right here, and they are of different genres that they all have a fantastical element to them, which is kind of fun. Um, let's start with Aquatope on the White Sand. Now, this has the least fantastical elements of any show, because it's mostly a grounded story about uh, a girl who has failed uh, in her pursuit of being an idol. And instead of going home to face that, she runs away from her, from, you know, her reality and ends up at this aquarium where a girl just a little younger than her is trying to save the aquarium, uh, save it. Uh, her parents loved it and she loved it with them and her grandfather's looking to eventually sell it off and so it's this well if i don't have a dream anymore maybe i can support your dream uh and i said there's some fantastic elements because it is that like japan nature kind of fantastic like there's like a water spirit and weird things happen in the aquarium uh it's beautiful pa works did, did an incredible job this is their a team uh working really hard it's a double length so we're gonna get more of it um I think the story is really fun. It's an original. It's not based on a manga or light novel or a video game or anything like that. Um, uh, I think the pacing is a little off, maybe, uh, episode to episode, even though, you know, like, they're, I, I think it's fantastic. I, and honestly, it's just a sweet story. Um, and it's, I don't know, it does play in your heartstrings. It's got very, very silly moments, but it also, I don't know how educational it is about, you know, working in an aquarium and, um, and all of that, but it, it does take those uh, ideas. It takes aquarium and the animals in aquarium and taking care of them very seriously, which I can appreciate. This is not a sloppy show in any in any stretch. Um, and yeah, uh, the kind of like figuring out what you want to do and supporting other people's dreams and finding your own dreams. I think it's it's lovely, and it's just a little gay. It's not. It is. It's not. But it is. So I'm sure that there will be some interesting stories written by some very fun people about these characters in the future. And we'll leave it at that. And we'll move on to remake our life, which is again fantastical element. I didn't plan that out when I. I just looked at what's out this season, what's new out this season that I really like, and I want to talk about a couple of them. And remake our life. Uh, is, first off, it's set in college. Even if the character in blue there looks like she's a high schooler, it is set in college. These are all college kids, uh, which is important to say because it's all about art school. And you're like, oh, Pat, I don't care about these overachievers following their dreams in art school. Well, what if I told you that Kyoya, uh, who is, uh, he is the gentleman on the left in the background there, uh, what if I told you that uh, he gave up his dream? to go to visual art school and instead went to business school. And then he, you know, did that, but he ended up working in a company that made video games anyway, which was his dream was to work on games. So he still ended up doing that. He just kind of wasted his time and didn't pursue it. And he ended up in a company that made terrible games. No one liked. And even when he eventually ended up on a, as a contractor on a game, um, uh, he still, it failed. The project failed. And he wondered, his big regret was, what if I had chosen that school? What if I went to that visual school? And he wakes up at that school. He's now there. And he's got all of the knowledge, um, or he wakes up at where, before he made the decision so we can go to that school. That's what I said. But he wakes up, you know, he has all that knowledge of, I know what sells, I know what works. And, oh, wait, I'm living with, a musician that I really liked, a artist that really got through me through some heavy times, a writer who's incredible. And uh, the girl in the center there, he worked for her 
uh, on a project that failed right before. So now he knows these characters. He's starting to know people in this thing, and he has some knowledge. He's like, I know what's going to be popular in this. And, uh, well, if you want to get that your singer, we should get on this, like, Japanese-only uploading site where, you know, like, that you haven't heard of, but I know is going to be super popular. Um, he can kind of use that. Like, his power is, I have some knowledge. Uh, and uh, actually, one of his biggest strengths is, well, even though he's 18, he's also 28. So he's a grown-ass man that has, like, worked in the real world. And so he is a fantastic product manager uh, and, like, production person for a bunch of very creative but still growing mentally uh, and physically people. Um, and as I said, it's important that these are college kids because also, hey, guess what? If you were a 18 year old who was just going to school for the first time and maybe you're supported by your folks, maybe you're not. And you have all these like you're getting weighed down by the realities of the school work you're doing. And there's just this like very reliable guy who's like cute enough, but like reliable. He believes in you more than you believe in yourself. And he he's working hard for your to to like for your dreams. Yeah, guess what? Every girl likes him. He's like he's. He's A plus boyfriend material. He's fiance material. Uh, so this show is horny, but again, it's college kids and it is certainly weird. Um, you do get the sense that this dude also was just awkward all the time anyway. So it kind of fits. Uh, you have to sort of be okay with it. Uh, it. Hey, look, it's way better than some other shows where it's like, oh, that guy was 30 and now he's 11. That's weird that he's flirting with a girl. It's weird because he's 11. He's 11. That's weird. By the grace of the gods, you shouldn't have had that element to you is what I'm saying. Anyway, Remake Our Life is actually fucking cool. And here's the thing. Here's the thing about Remake Our Life. It understands that it's set in the year 2006 into 2007. So it is just like, oh, well, this girl, if she liked a song in like the 90s when she was like young, like 10 years, you know, what before... Yeah, she would like the first theme to Roni Kenshin. And if she was, do, she was, you know, this, this is uh, Nanako uh, on the left, uh, aka Nana. Um, if she was going to be on a site that did covers of like popular songs, nerdy popular songs, then yes, she would sing this, this song from an anime, like a popular anime in 2006. It, they spent the money to do the things they should be doing, and it's kind of incredible. Uh, most of the time, if there's a karaoke track, it's some made-up thing or it's like the theme song to the show. And I don't hate that, but I love just being like, yeah, you you would sing that because that's a song that you've been singing in karaoke for like 10 years. In the same way, I have songs like that. They're like, people are like, that's why I sing Danger, Danger, High Voltage because like that song's fucking old, but I know I can sing it really well karaoke. Uh, anyway, let's remake our life. It's great. Check it out. And our last uh, is How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. Okay, so we got uh, Soma here. Uh, he's in the bottom middle. And yes, this is an isekai. Yes, it is based on a manga, which is based on a light novel. How could you tell? Maybe it's from the title that just fully explains what the show is about. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's an isekai. I'm doing it. Look, there are 11 new and returning isekai this season. One of them was going to make my three. Um, but I think it's really good because it's looking at the... Look, it's fantastical. Look, there are beast people. There are fights. It's an action show. Uh, but also, it's about a dude who wanted to be like a civil servant and instead got isekai and was granted the title of king of a kingdom. Uh, partially to protect himself, uh, but also he's like, well, I'm going to do this job. I'm going to be engaged to the former princess and we got these uh the characters in the top background there are uh each duke of a different army in, that are opposed maybe opposed but at least not willing to immediately submit he's like we got to take care of this famine we got to uh, find uh housing and work for the refugees that have come through we got to raise some money because we're supporting the effort to take out the demon lord um and there's other countries breathing, breathing down our necks. Uh, we're going to prevent an invasion and stop a coup and help people. Um, and he's taking a like pragmatic, practical approach to it. 
uh he's also still like what 19 or whatever so you know he ends up being like i got carried away with my stirring speech uh because he's read a lot of history and so he's like i know what this is i've got this thing whatever uh there's a there's a seto kaiba reference in the first episode or second episode very weird and great meets the first episode um uh, I will say the cast of characters surrounding him is really great, including in the bottom right there. We got my boy Poncho. He's a dude who just like traveled all throughout and knows all about different kinds of food that people don't normally eat. But like, or this one region eats this, but not everybody else does uh, to help with their food shortages. He's like steps up. Um, the little girl in the bottom right, Tomoe, uh, definitely hasn't done enough, but I expect... They set her up to do more later. Um, also, there's just, like, great supporting characters. There's this whole, like, very clear these ladies like him uh, for being, like, a strong leader and a good dude. Uh, it's a fantastical isekai, right? But he's got a power that's, like, it's not like appraisal or anything. It's, he's, he's, he's a little overpowered. He can put parts of his consciousness into inanimate objects and control them. He normally uses that to have pens be able to dictate stuff for him so that he can write more letters and documents faster. Um, but he also can control little puppets um, or little, yeah, little friends to kind of be like support. Like he, at one point he uses a little wooden mouse to get around to look for survivors in a landslide. Um, lots of practical stuff. Uh, there's certainly some drama to it, uh, and some light little moments, like, you know, it's like he goes out on a date with his princess, you know, his betrothed, uh, and they're dressed like students at the Magic Academy. Um, there's a lovely scene where they're, like, talking and definitely flirting, and their bodyguard, who is in the bottom left, is also like, should I continue to pretend to be asleep? And this is like, this is a good moment. Like, there's a lot of just, like, yeah, people are, people, like... Look, are all of the female characters interested in him? Yes, it is still, it's an anime and an isekai. Uh, it's still there. But is it a different take on your overpowered, defeat all enemies, accident, and, un you know, he is practical about his powers. He is practical about the world that, that he is in. He is trying to help people. And he's also dealing in a way, he's dealing with the, weight of the fact that he's king in a way that some stories don't ever deal with that kind of like the weight in the reality where they're just like yeah he's now a supreme being so yeah he can deal with that it's like no he can't you know he's he's still practical but he's like he's pra he's practical enough to recognize that things are weird and that like he's got a lot of responsibility suddenly the how realist hero rebuild the kingdom is great all those shows are great. Um, those are three excellent summer shows. What are you watching? Leave me a, a note in the comments. Put a, put a comment uh, down below this video. Let me know what you're watching. Uh, what's your favorite show this season? Are you are you really liking Sunny Boy? Which I uh, nah, I didn't. But I, but if you did, hell yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other shows that people were like, this is the best show this season. And that was one that I was like, mm -hmm. uh, or is it sequels that got you going? Is it the second half of the second season of that time I got reincarnated as a slime? Is it more dragon made that's getting you really, uh, happy? Um, are you watching, I, I don't know, like, Hey, the second, the, the second part now of the second season of welcome to demon school, ear McCoon is mwah, so good. Uh, or, you know, yeah, let me know. Let me know. Is it that show where it's about the, the hosts of a kid show and they're all, the, the hosts are all like dead inside? I didn't like that show. I don't even remember the name of it. But if that's your show, let me know in the comments. Maybe you could change my mind. Or if you have a suggestion of something you'd like to see me do in the future, I would love that. I have a few ideas, uh, but I, you know, always have to have more. So feel free to let me know what you think I should do in a future Pat Bear's Anime Club video. Speaking of which, that's Pat Bear's Anime Club. I've been Pat Bear, in case you didn't know that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.